IMP program is uh, started with the idea given by Ms. Pavitra. So today you all are reaping the benefits of that and we are very happy to have her sharing with you her experience, her expertise that she has gained over the years. So thank you so much, Pavi. And uh, over to you. Give a self-introduction. I just uh, didn't go into the credentials. Thank you, Pavi. Thank you so much, Madam. And uh, it's a privilege for me to uh, have to do the session for all of you. And uh, I really want to thank Madam Vishaka. And because of the Madam, I really love to do the lecturing. And also, thank you, Madam. Uh, you are the milestone and uh, you are the role model for my life. And thank you, Madam, again for the opportunity. So I will, uh, I will share my all the experience to all of the students here. So. Uh, uh, all of you uh, can, I will explain my uh, career life um, as well as what I'm doing current now, what I'm currently involved in and everything. So, uh, so first of all, I will tell you about myself. Uh, give me a second, I will share my screen with you all. Hope all of you can see my screen. Right. So today we are going to identify uh, how to identify your passion to become a quality assurance engineer. Right. So uh, when I was uh, uh, studying at uh, Rohan University, actually I uh, I did very different uh, domain, which is agriculture. But while I was uh, studying at agriculture, since I work for the economic domain, I really interested to work on the IT industry. So because of that, I did BIT degree from University of Colombo parallel. So that's the main point uh, that I entered to the industry. While I was uh, working for the my second year at university, I was able to enter to the virtue sub. Right? So at that time, my uh, morale was to work in the IT culture environment so that was my uh, intention actually at that time so how i get to know about the it industry culture it industry and the it culture is one of our student one of our internal students uh, uh, at that time we had discussion and they told that you know that the it industry is very different from the um, traditional officer so that's why because of that we are we will be getting this type of benefits and your work life and your uh, entire life will be changed if you can go to the IT industry so that's the motivation for me to go into the IT industry so I'm pretty sure that once we complete this uh, lesson this, this webinar you also will have that motivation with you all I'm pretty sure about that and uh, I after that when I uh, when I was in second, my second year, I um, sent my CV to Virtusa and luckily I was able to uh, get into Virtusa team. And after that, 15 years I worked for them. And this year, January, I had to resign from there, but uh, even though still I work in it there, uh, because that I, I want to uh, change my career as a lecturer. Currently I'm working as a senior lecturer and uh, we are doing a lot of innovation. That's why I really like to do the lecturing and uh, to share that knowledge with you. So even though not only the lecturing, still I am doing the culture assurance work. So this, um, I'm very uh, glad to tell you that I was able to work with the education ministry program, which is uh, you will be able to get the benefit very soon. So that project also, I did the culture for that project as well. So that means still I'm working in the culture assurance field. So I think uh, you will gain a lot of insights and a lot of sh uh, experience sharing throughout this session. So I know most of you, uh, you have done your IT degree because you want to uh, work as a software engineer. So that's your ultimate goal. So we'll see how you can uh, live in your dream life as a software profession by working as a software quality assurance engineer. So uh, during the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to answer any questions. Uh, I will provide the answers uh, during the session or at the uh, end of the session. And uh, apart from that, since I'm coming from the industry, uh, I think that uh, you all can very closely talk to me. Right? There is no barriers because we are coming from the flat structure. 
So if you have any questions, always welcome to ask anything, anytime. Okay. Uh, my intention is to provide you the industrial framework, industrial uh, atmosphere in this webinar as well. Right, so let me know what is your dream office. Is it choice A or choice B? Think about that. What would be your dream office? Do you like to work in a traditional office environment like choice A? Think about, and you can see in the choice B, right? So choice B is a very uh, interesting area to work, right? What, uh, what would be your dream office? What is your dream? I'm pretty sure most of you like to work, uh, work you work in the office like choice B, right? Am I correct? There are, uh, uh, there are a lot of ways you can communicate with me. You can uh, send me the message, right? If you have any corrections and uh, you can raise your hand. If you have any corrections, you can use emojis. If you're happy or anything, right? You can tell anything throughout the lecture. So I know that most of you want to work in a live work want to work in office like choice B. So we'll see how you can go there. Right? This is the IT company culture. When you are when you are working as an IT culture sales engineer or as IT software engineer, then you will work uh, work a com work a company like this, right? It has a open door policy it has a flexi working environment what do you mean by the flexi flex working environment flex working environment means uh, like government office we do not have time to go in and go out we have flexi time you can start your work at any time you can leave the office anytime but that does not mean that uh, you cannot misuse that, right? If you are coming to the office by 2 p.m. and if you are leaving office by 4 p.m. so that that will not work, definitely. But uh, you have flexibility. If you have any issues to come into office, coming into office, then you can request work from home, like telecommunication facility. There are a lot of facilities around the IT company culture. And uh, we have, since we have the flat culture, you can talk to anyone, anytime, okay? And there is no miss, Mrs. O, the title, uh, we all are like same, even though we are uh, working with our CEO, we are like, uh, we all are like one team. So what we are expecting from you is you have to work as a team. So your uh, team player skills has to be very high. Here you can see the uh, how much flexibility you are getting when you are coming to the IT office. Right? So uh, you will get a lot of beanbags, uh, you will get a lot of uh, pool areas, you will be getting a lot of um, relaxing areas to work. Right? While you are doing work, you can do the relaxing as well. So that's one of the, another advantage you will be getting while you are working for the IT company. Right? Here also you can see that the open door policies here, the, the our floors and everything is very colorful. Right? Uh, you can have your fun time there, you can have very good time with your colleagues because of uh, of this flat culture. So now we are moving to work in this type of culture. If you are working in that type of culture, what are the things you should have? You should be very self-organized. You should be very self-disciplined. Right? That's why you need to know uh, whether I'm having that passion um, to work in this type of culture. And later we are coming into the very specific topic, which is how you can identify your potential, uh, your potential skill set to become a culture assurance engineer. Okay. So while you're working in this type of culture, what are the things you are getting? Right? You will get high job satisfaction. Why you are getting high job satisfaction is, as a culture assurance engineer, you are providing solution for your customer's problem. Right? That, um, then how you can get the satisfaction, right? So when you are getting your customer's questions, right, the, sol the, uh, the, the pain points that they are getting, right, you will feel very empathy on them. Right? So after analyzing the requirements, their pain points, with your expertise, you will be able to provide good solutions, good suggestions. That's one, uh, that's the one uh, outcome 
you have to provide as a quality assurance engineer. By doing that, you will be able to see that your customer's business acceleration your customers' business will grow because of your suggestions. So you will be getting a lot of just job satisfaction, right? You cannot get that job satisfaction elsewhere. And uh, comparatively, you will be getting very high salary in Sri Lankan context, right? In the IT sector, you will be getting very good salary rate compared with all other industries. And you will get work-life balance. Why, why it is important? Work-life balance is important even though as a fresh graduate you are not thinking like uh, work-life balance is really important. I really want to work hard and I want to go to my objectives then I can settle down. But if you select the IT field, it's not like that. Every day is challenging. Every day you, learn, you have to learn something new and same time you have to balance your life as well. So work-life balance is another real important factor for you to succeed in your personal life as well as your career life. So if you're working in IT field, you will be getting the benefit of work-life balance. Since we are not operating as a traditional officers, you, you will be given the flexibility to set up your own work, in work environment. Okay? So because of that, you will be able to balance your life with the family and with your educations, educations and all. So as example, when I, uh, when I was doing my master's MBA, at, MBA in IT at University of Maratua, I work for Virtusa and at that time I worked for the very critical project. So we had to work more than 10 to 20 hours per day. So that's very normal. But since I have to work, do my studies, uh, they allow me to do my studies, right? Then I can leave office by 4 or 4.30. Then uh, I can, uh, if there is anything I append in, then I can do everything uh, during the night. So likewise, you can maintain your work-life balance while you are working in the IT industry. So that's one of the real advantage you will be getting and you will realize the importance of that in your future. So the next opportunity you will be getting is, you will be getting professional development. In IT industry, uh, they are allocating a lot of uh, budget for the professional development and training and development activities. So by, uh, in, by participating in a lot of trainings and a lot of uh, activities, you will be able to develop yourself uh, and you will be able to develop your professional development. So that's another thing that you will be getting while you're working as an IT profession. So I think that motivates you to become an IT profession, right? Uh, anything to ask? If you have any questions, you can ask. Okay. Yeah, okay. If not, we can uh, move to the next. I think you now you have very good motivation to but work. Hari, I think yes. asking questions is an essential thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, of course. Uh, if you are doing active listening, that means yeah. you should ask. And children, this something. is like, see, Pavi is a very friendly person. So why not take, make use of this chance to ask questions? Feel free to ask anything. Okay, Pavi. Okay, right Yes, you can uh, stop me at any point and you can ask anything, right? If you're thinking that it's not uh, good to disturb me. So there is not, nothing like that, right? In our office, when you're working in the IT industry, right? So you have to, every day you have to do the daily briefing. In the daily briefing, you have to raise your voice. Right? That's one thing. Uh, when you are working for a child team, that's of course you have to tell the things, right? I So I told you, we have the open door policies. You can talk to as any talk to us anytime so make use of this chance you can raise your questions uh, and we can i can provide any provide the answers for you so now i think you are motivated to work uh, work a place work the it industry so now you are thinking that will there be a place for me right so i think now you are having this question with you definitely you are having a place so this uh, i um, here I added one picture from my company. So here you can see there is no gender bias at all. Right? That's also one good thing for you to uh, 
uh, if you're thinking that since I'm a female, whether there's a place for me, so there is nothing like that. If you're if you're passionate uh, passionate on the things that you are doing yes of course you have the place right so here also i included one of the uh, one of the uh, interesting area uh, and uh, one of the famous area at our uh, working area which is uh, virtue sir uh, you can see uh, how beauty our interior and everything right so we are having very friendly team we are having very friendly culture so now you are think you are thinking that Will there be a place for me? Okay. So according to the uh, National IT BPM survey, Workforce Survey, you can see that there is a place for you. Right. So according to the survey, uh, the percentage, the growth percentage in the IT industry is 15.7. That means more than 50% is uh, growing per year. So you have definitely you have the place for that place here. Okay, so when we think about the demand and supply gap of graduates, you can see still we are having 12,140 gap. So that means we are having very good uh, demand in our IT sector, but our uh, graduate supply is unable. Actually, we are not reaching the reaching our demand. So that means we are having gap. So you are having a lot of privilege to go into our IT industry. But the sad thing is, while we are conducting interviews, actually I, uh, I was involved in interviews uh, more than uh, seven, eight years. Uh, so our success rate was less than, for the first interview, our success rate was less than 2%, less than 20%. That means if, we, if there is 10 students coming into the interview, out of 10, only two will be selected for the second interview. So that's the rate that we will be have, that we are having current now. So that now currently also we are having the same problem today. And uh, last uh, week I discussed with some of the IT companies. So they all mentioned like, uh, uh, still we can see that gap and uh, still we are having that uh, problem. So that's why we really want you to aware about the industrial demand and we want you to prepare for the industry. So that's why we have set up this type of uh, activities, right? Um, some students are thinking that uh, I'm having good GPA. So because of that, uh, you have to recruit me, right? So nothing like that. Even though that you're having good GPA, you should be able to work for our customers. Our basic understanding is we want to serve our customers. We want to understand our customers. We want to provide solutions to the customers. So that's what we want to have. To do that, definitely you should have very good technical domain as well as very good uh, soft skills. Okay. So these things will be calculated and will be evaluated. But if you are having degree, that does not mean that you will be able to meet that requirement. You have to take extra actions. You have to take extra uh, work to go into the level that you want to have. I'm pretty sure with this type of uh, sessions with uh, the under Mishak Badev's guidance, you are getting a lot of um, uh, webinars and a lot of expertise and knowledge and all. So by doing these type of activities, you will be get to know before you are going to the industry, you know what we are expecting. So it's it's very easy you to then you will be then it's very easy you to see easy to uh, achieve the industrial target. Okay. So now, since we can see, uh, uh, we have the opportunity, so now we are thinking that, what type of job roles I can go? There are a lot of op I work, workforce job categories, right? but since you are coming to, um, coming since you want to become a software culture assurance, I'm thinking that you're more into management information systems. Uh, you're more interested on management information systems and quality assurance. So in that case, you can see that for the quality assurance engineers, you are having 14% job, job rate. That means out of 100, you will be getting 14 uh, jobs for the quality assurance engineers. Apart from that, there are software project managers as well. Some, some students are very good in uh, project management. They are very good in presenting. They are very good in documentation. They are very good in handling paper. So 
but the industrial situation is it's a, it's a little bit difficult to enter as a software project manager if you want to become a project manager in your in the in your future it's better if you can um, enter to the industry as a software quality assurance engineer once you are uh, enter to the industry as a software quality assurance engineer after five six years of time you will be getting management task as well so then you are you will be working as a technical project manager so that's the uh, that's one option to become a software project manager so likewise there are a lot of opportunities available to you in this uh, diagram you can see that there are a lot of opportunities for software engineers right so previously we uh, recruit the front-end developers then the back-end developers likewise but now we are um, moving to full stack developers and we have some salesforce developers like there are some new additions also to the software engineering devops and devsecops likewise we are having very uh, demanding areas currently so what i want you to suggest is so think uh, just check the some good companies job posting and identify what they are requesting so plan your future with these skills okay so we'll move as of now if you have any questions uh, you can ask so i got some direct message i will uh, during the Q&A session, I will uh, explain each and everything. Okay, so you can post your questions. So, uh, since we are focusing on software quality assurance engineer, then we'll see if you are quality assurance engineer, what are the things you have to do? Okay, then you can identify whether I'm capable enough to do these activities. I know that you are coming from second year or third year. That means you have a little bit understanding about software quality assurance if not i will brief what is quality assurance engineer right so software quality assurance is you are providing the quality to the software you are executing the program intended of finding defects so your intention is identify bugs identify defects so that's that's your primary objective Right. So when you think about the a day in the life of a software quality assurance engineer, throughout the day, you have to think about how can I identify the bugs? Right? How can I break this product? How can I break this software? Why is that? You are doing it. You are, your intention is very good. Right? You do not want to give breakable product to the customer. You do not want to see the risk, uh, risk are raising in your customer's product. Right? always you have to work with the empathy so that's i want to highlight that you want to work with the empathy because during the interview also we are thinking that we are checking that whether you are empathy right? if you are empathy only then you have you will uh, you can succeed as a congestion engineer otherwise uh, while you are doing some level of testing you can say yeah i think testing is enough but if you are more empathy on your customer product then always you want to provide best quality product to the customer okay so now, uh, assuming uh, now you're software culture assurance engineer and uh, you're coming to the office, right? So then what you have to do? So software culture assurance life is a little bit different. You have to work under pressure. Why is that? Because as you all know, even though that we are promised to provide the deliverables on time because of the environmental factors and because of uh, some un expected thing of uh, products or our uh, deliverables are getting late but as a quality assurance engineer you cannot sign a product without your without uh, checking the quality right so you are you have to work under pressure you are getting the product most of the time with very limited time you have very limited time to do all the testing okay and you will be getting a lot of pressure from project managers and the delivery managers. Delivery managers want to anyhow deliver the product. So that's the ultimate goal. And if not, they have to, our company has to pay the penalty for the customer. So that's the real situation. So as a software quality assurance engineer, you should aware about everything. Right? You have to work with 
very empathy about your company. Company uh, gave you the job opportunity, so you have to uh, you have to have very good empathy about your company. So you do not want to uh, kill your company name. Okay? So you are the one who are making the quality of the product. You are, we are the one who is uh, having the ownership of the quality. If you are telling that this product is uh, ready to develop, then it will uh, deploy into the customer and then thousands and hundred thousands of users will be using your product with, uh, because, because you ensure the quality of this product, right? So you need to understand that every day you are going to the office like this, right? You have very uh, pressure environment, right? but all the people are very supportive. You should have very good uh, team management skill with everything, now you are going to the office. So your development team is providing you the build. So your objective is to identify bugs, okay? So how you can identify bugs? You already, maybe you already written some test cases. I know that uh, second year and third year students, you have you already done these activities and you know how to write the test cases, right? So you have to write the test cases. That's one main thing as a software engineer you had to do. So by executing these test cases, you should be able to identify the errors or the bugs in the system. Right? So most of the time, you have to think outside the box as well. Even though that you're having set of test cases, right? you have to think beyond that. You have to think apart from these things, what else I can do to make sure the quality of this product. So that type of intention you should have. So that's the way you can become an exceptional quality assurance engineer. Right? I know that you all know that um, entering into the industry is easy, but staying with the industry is not easy. Okay? All the graduates are coming from different, different universities. They are coming from different experience, right? So everyone is unique. With this unique individuals, you also want to be a unique person. So always, uh, you are always you want you also want to think, how can I uh, improve my skill set to become a unique person in my team? Okay? You, so when you identify bugs, you can be a different person. You have to think outside the box, and you can identify some main issues which no one can, no one else can think of. Right. So how you can improve that skill, how you can uh, add these uh, skills to, your, to yourself. Right. So read about the articles related to the quality assurance. For most of the companies are publishing their white papers and uh, the, uh, their findings. So you have to refer them. Then you will see that, yes, there are some other ways to break the system. So why I'm not using that? to check whether my system is capable enough to handle this type of situation, right? You had to do that. So that's one thing you had to do. First, you need to identify the bugs. That's one of your job role. And you need to identify the potential problem within software. Right? When you are getting the requirement from the customer, customers will tell you that these are the functional requirements I want to have. But uh, if you are not asking any questions. So how can you identify their real uh, requirements? It's not easy to get their real requirements at first time. You have to ask five wise. So one of our client, when I was working for British Telecom project, so he asked us to, every time, if our client is changing our requirement, you have to ask why five times. Okay? Put the old thing the why can you have to ask five times. It took it then only you will be able to get to know why he is he why he needs to do this change. Right? Otherwise, he will tell that um, I need to add one uh, more module, one more login um, credentials, or something like that. Then you have to ask why, why, why. Then only you will realize that there are some security threats. Then you know the risk, right? Risk no, no, you have to plan for the mitigation, right? Because of the mitigation, you will be getting more, more business as well. So that's the way you have to think as a software culture assurance engineer. Then you have to plan and perform different stages of testing. So testing is a different thing. You already aware about the testing life cycle, the things you have to do, right? everything. But 
you have to plan your day in effective way. So that's the only way you can perform your activities with high accuracy. And another thing is, while we are conducting the interview, we are checking that as well. We are checking whether you can prioritize the task as well. Okay. Assuming the scenario like this. So every time what uh, software quality assurance are facing, what type of situation that we are facing is, one is we are getting very limited time, as I mentioned before. But we have to execute 100 test cases. So how can we execute 100 test cases within one week time? Okay. That's a correction. So uh, in here, right, we cannot tell uh, you had to do this, uh, this and that, you had to communicate this to the customer and you had to get the ex extension, something like that. You have to think, how can I do that? You have to plan that. One thing is you have to do the prioritization. I know during the lecture time, you know, we had to do the prioritization, but how can you practically add this prioritization to the work that you have to do as a quality assurance engineer. In the test cases, you have to check what are the high priority test cases. High priority means the business impacted high. If there is anything is having high business impact, you have to test that, uh, test that first. So that's the way how you can do the planning. So these things you have to do as a quality assurance engineer. That means you have to every time you have to make your decisions. You are empowered with the decision-making ability since you are IT profession. Right? You, you are not supposed to ask from anyone, but you have to, uh, since you are uh, going as an intern, you have to uh, communicate with your seniors, you have to communicate with your lead before you are taking any decision. Then with this team decision, you can plan the, plan the task which are assigned to you. And apart from that, we are expecting you to develop new tools, technology and testing processes. That's the way that our industry is evolving. At Virtusa, we have a lot of accelerators. By providing accelerators, we are uh, accelerating our customers' business outcomes. That's our objective. When you're going for a job interview, I really want you to check the company's vision, mission, objectives, and goals. Right? Every time, as an employee, we are checking um, how the individual, how this interviewer can uh, provide their support to improve our, to align with our objective, to, uh, to get the benefit for our objective. Right? So one of our one of our objective is we want to accelerate our customers business outcomes to our accelerators so if you want to become a, a virtuous or if you want to become a particular company employee you want to know what they are searching for so almost all the companies are thinking about the innovators otherwise um, I, you, you can't work as a it engineer right so always you as a quality assurance engineer you want to think that how can i um innovate this testing process one thing is you can uh, use the automation not the automation fully automation right so likewise you have to think the global trends for the software quality assurance and other than that always you have to do the document and you have to publish your results for that, what type of skills you should have? You should have very good presentation skills. That does not mean that you should have the that communication skill. It's a technical communication. When we are doing the interviews, you have to fill the form and there we have to check that. How can you communicate the technical things to the customer? So that of course, most of the companies are checking that. How can we check that is, we are asking you to explain your final year project. Right? In there, if you're more uh, willing to work as a software quality assurance engineer, uh, you should test your product very well. So then we ask him from you, how would you do the testing in your, uh, for the final year project? So if you are passionate about the testing, then you will tell that I did that and I did that and I, uh, I was able to introduce this thing for my testing. So likewise, so these are the things actually we are doing in the, uh, you are doing as a software quality assurance engineer. Okay. So then for you need to understand that why we need to do the testing. Okay? So we are doing the testing because we want to build the confidence. Okay? So you have to make sure that 
whenever you are publishing a results to the customer, you should be very confident. So how can you do that in a very confident manner? Everything you have to be, you have to document, even though that you are doing some ad hoc testing, everything you have to document and you have to tell to the customer, we did these, these things and we are pretty sure that your, your product cannot break uh, with this uh, scope testing. Okay? And we need to do the testing because we need to find the faults. And we need to reduce the cost that comes with the empathy. And we need to show system meets user requirements. And finally, we want to assess the software quality. So the, that's why we need to do the testing. While you are doing the testing for your final year project as well, you have to make sure that you are doing the testing with this intention. Okay? While you are providing the answers for the interview questions, we are checking whether you have done testing uh, because you have to do that testing or else uh, you have that passion, right? So this is a reminder, if you have any questions, you can post your questions uh, during the Q&A session. I will check the questions and I will provide the answers to you, right? So now you know what are the things uh, you have to do uh, at office. Now you are thinking that to perform this culture assurance daily activities, what are the skills uh, should they have, right? So you know that most of the time as a tester, you, are, uh, you have to tell bad news, right? Developers are uh, developing their build and they do not want to say, uh, they, want, they do not want to hear that their code is not working. Their functions are not working, right? They are very proud and they will say, they will tell, um, no, it, it works fine for, it works fine. So it works fine in my machine. So that's the most common thing we can see. But as a tester, right, if you can bring bad news, right, you are telling to your uh, developer, you are baby suckling, right? He is, he is also one of your team member. Right? But you have to bring bad news to him. So how can you convey this bad news to him? Right? You cannot be, uh, actually you cannot uh, hire, finger point anyone in our IT industry, right? So that's not the way you have to work. Uh, how you can communicate everything, right? So you have to, as a quality assurance engineer, you are the glue. You are the one who is working with every stakeholder. So you have to work with this uh, client, you have to work with the development team, you have to work with the business analyst, you have to work with the project manager, you have to work with the technical uh, people, right? Uh, and application support engineers, you have to work with all. And you have to come in, you, you, if you have very good uh, friendly environment, then and you are, you have to aware all the team members, we are doing quality because as a team, we do not want to have, we do not want to fail. That's why we are focusing on the quality, right? That's, this is not my product. This is ours one. This is ours. This is, if there is anything, um, if there's anything, um, any feature is breaking in client environment. So, so it's very, uh, it's, so it's very, bad thing for all of us, not only for culture assurance engineer, right? So even though that you're telling bad news, you have to tell it in a very constructive way, right? Um, if you can tell this bad news to someone in a very constructive way, then you have that pressure. And who can work under worst time pressure, right? So most of the time, as I mentioned before, you have to work under worst time pressure. If you can work under uh, pressure, then you can work, actually, then you have, then you can become a tester. That does not mean that you are having high work pressure, right, rather than uh, developers, but actually we have to work under pressure. So that's normal thing when you are working for the industry for one to two years, it is normal. Actually, you will use to it. Uh, need to take different view or different mindset, what it is in, right, as I mentioned before, unless you want to think outside the box. If you have that mindset, if you're thinking that I'm very, uh, I really want my, I really want to provide good features for my customer. I really want uh, something new, something innovative to my customer. So then that means you are very uh, good. You're having very good skill set to become a tester. And apart from that, if you, how you can know you're passionate about the tester. 
when you get up in the morning and if you if you are thinking that i really want to do the testing and i want to find the defects if you have this mindset then definitely you will be succeed as a quality assurance engineer because ultimately we want to find the defects and we want to break the system finally we want to provide the quality product to the customer when you deliver the quality product to the customer if you if you can uh, if you feel very happy about the things you have done then you are passionate about the testing right so these things you need to uh, cultivate inside you when you are doing your final year project then you are used to it then when you are going for a job interview then you can tell everything with your experience right if you can uh, uh, if you can explain everything with the experience then we know that you have uh, you have done it before you are coming to the industry so we are giving a lot of chances for that type of students and most importantly not only this we you need to be high emotional intelligence so that's that overall it so emotional intelligence is heart and brain has to be has to go together right so why you need to be um, why you need to know more about in emotional intelligence and why we are recruiting more emotional intelligence people to culture assurance team because you are as a culture assurance engineer your behavior is highly impact on project success or failure okay because if you are really motivated to find defects then your developer is also aware that uh, our culture assurance engineer is not um, it's uh, it's not easy to handle uh, handle culture assurance engineer then we have to uh, check before we are delivering that to the customer end, right so because of that your project will success or failure most of the time determined because of the quality assurance team and you are the one who has to communicate and connect with each and every stakeholder so then you are playing very uh, important role in the testing very important role in the it project so that's why you need to have the emotional intelligence emotional intelligence means you should be able to understand your emotions as well as you will be able to understand others emotion and you should be able to uh, work in ba in balance with brain and heart why uh, you need to have this skill is because you have to uh, work with the social social mean the team in the social or team work you should have this empathy and the social team uh, skills you should have that's why the emotional intelligence is important and as a quality assurance team member you are having huge responsibilities right? because of these responsibilities maybe you are you are you feel stress and uh, but even though that you are responsible and you are stressed you cannot blame anyone right so you should be very emotional intelligence and you will be having a lot of arguments but nothing you, you you have to take nothing personal so we are doing the arguments and we are doing the discussions we are having the stressful meetings because we want to provide quality product to the customer nothing else right so that's why you need to have this emotional intelligence with you and uh, finally you want to ensure the overall quality and you want to add value to the final product so that's also another thing that we are expecting from you and uh, as a quality assurance engineer you have responsibility and you want to create a good working environment for all of the team members right as a quality assurance engineer if you are asking uh, developers are oh, you did uh, something wrong so because of that we had to test everything again and again right you cannot blame like this as a quality assurance engineer you have to create a good working environment for others right? even though that they are doing something something uh, wrong you have to tell that this time uh, we did mistake so uh, as a team we have to uh, go together and uh, next time we we have to make sure that we are not doing this mistake again right? likewise you have to motivate your team members you are thinking that i am not the project manager why should i motivate others right as a culture assurance engineer we are expecting these things from you because you are the one who are bringing the um, ugly news bringing the bad news for the team Right? so you should be very motivated pessimist uh, sorry optimistic student optimistic team member uh, for the team and always you have to believe in win win theory right you are 
uh, expecting customer expectations. So same time you are expecting our your company expectations. So finally, end of the day, you also uh, getting the benefits of this win-win theory. And you should have very positive, effective interpersonal skills, and you have you should have very good emotional bonding between team members for success and satisfying. Why it is important, right? As I mentioned before, as a quality assurance engineer, you have huge responsibility. You have huge uh, uh, workload and you have to communicate with different stakeholders. Now you are thinking that I'm having a lot of issues, a lot of uh, things to do with short period of time. How can I do? You have the team. Right? Even though that you are intern, you have the team. Even though that you are quality assurance lead, you have the team. So you should, you, are, you and your team members should, should bond with very good emotional bonding. Right. So that's the only way you can succeed as a quality assurance team member. So not like sometimes we can say that uh, so some companies for the developers that they are providing one module for the one developer and uh, the rest for others. They can divide that like, like that. But for the quality assurance, it's not like the overall quality is owned by you that you are having more than uh, you, you are having more responsibilities. Right. So because of that, you should have very good relationship and team bonding with your team. So always you need to have this positive emotional climate, such as respect, friendly, empathy, motivation, and honest create to more space in the team environment to promote positive, progressive, effective working patterns, right? We know that when we are doing the interviews, right? how you are thinking that how can we uh, check these things, right? We are asking some behavioral questions from you. Then we can identify under stressful condition, what is your behavior, right? How much friendly you are? What is the adoption, right? You have to adapt to the uh, company environment. That's of course you had to do, right? Uh, I'm getting questions, so, uh, once I complete the session, I will uh, go into all the questions. Right. So here, mandatory QA skills. I know that most of you are having these mandatory QA skills. That that means you know how what are the testing approaches, test case designing, test execution skills, right? everything we are discover, we discovered we learn during our university life right? and uh, programming skills right so uh, architecture and everything you know then if you want to become a technical quality assurance engineer right? in the quality assurance field you have two options one is a manual tester and the second one is technical qa so better to go as a manual tester or the basic tester then you will be able to get to uh, get an understanding about the basics uh, or foundations of quality assurance engineering that's mandatory so actually our module also align with this istqb istqb means the international software uh, testing professionals exam so if you are if you really want to uh, be with the industry, you can do that. Uh, our syllabus also align with that. Then, once you have an idea about these basics or foundation, then if you are thinking that I'm more into technical, then it's better to go to the technical. Yes, of course, there are technical QA areas available. Automation, performance, mobility testing, database testing, security testing, service testing. There are a lot of technical QA areas available. Here, I am giving you the basics uh, some people are thinking that testing is just a um, manual testing and uh, nothing technical, but it's not like that. If you are really interested or keen on technical areas, then definitely you can move into technical quality assurance engineers. So the mandatory soft skills are you should be able to have very good communication skills right? during the uh, project meeting during the team meeting and during the defect triage and everything you should be able to raise your voice, right? As I mentioned before, since you are working in the flat culture, if you are thinking that uh, I found defect and I think it's not good to communicate to the team, not, nothing like that. You are not point out anyone, you are point out the defect, right? 
so it's necessary to it's necessary necessary communicate everything uh, with good communication and listening is mandatory because you have to listen to your customers uh, requirement it should be active listening right uh, just listening is not uh, just listening is not enough you have to listen and uh, you have to act right so active listening is important and you should be adapt you should be have good adapt adaptability right if your customer is asking you to uh, go for the different tool then you have to tell yes of course you have to do with uh, with the background analysis right you should be able to do the adaptation accordingly and the prioritization also needed as i mentioned before because we had to limit it, we had to do a lot of work with limited time so the prioritization also needed so here I put one of my favorite pictures. So when we are working um, uh, at office, so this is the place. Uh, this is a, one of the place that we work. So you can see that uh, how the people are working. It's not like the traditional uh, working. So we all are working like this. Right? So you can see that good communication, listening, adaptability, prioritization, uh, why uh, this culture is important. Right? I'm thinking that, that I got 10 case, test cases to execute and someone else also getting 10 test cases to execute. But now we have very limited time and I got to know that someone uh, also missing. So then I have to go to my lead and ask, is there, is, is there anything I can do? Because I have some UI test cases to execute. If there is anything I want to do prioritization, I can do. So likewise, you have to, always you have to communicate. Uh, you have to do the prioritization and you have to do the adaptation, right? So then uh, we'll move to roles and responsibilities of culture assurance engineer. I know that you have an understanding about culture assurance test plan and test strategies. You need to understand the business domain, right? Test cases, test execution, and uh, report writing, and the matrices like uh, that um, report updating. Right? Everything you covered under your uh, theory. So, if you know these theories, so that's more than enough, right? So, we are not expecting more than this. Then, I will show you some examples what they are searching for. Right. This is the IFS uh, job uh, posting. Here you can see resource oriented QA engineer. Right. Are they expecting any technical thing? No. They want to have the resource oriented QA engineer. What does that mean? I think if you are resource oriented, if you are object oriented, object driven, then you will fit for the, the company, the IFS. And uh, should have a passion for ensuring the software quality. Right? That software quality passion uh, comes from within you. Right? You have to have that uh, passion. I, I do not want to uh, share this build with zero defect. Right? That may be your vision, but zero defect is not impossible. But you, you, are, uh, you are doing your best to make uh, it more reliable one. Right? You can see that. This is the one of the job posting, and this is from Virtusa. So uh, the bachelor's degree is one thing, but you should have very good analytical skills, good communication, written and verbal communication skills, and the familiarity with the software qualifications, practices, and theories. Right? You have everything now. You know the practices and theories. You should. You know that you should have very good analytical skills, right? And you know that you should have very uh, good communication skills as well. And this is from Niger Annex, right? What they're asking. So they also ask in the bachelor's degree and uh, they also ask in the testing methodologies and the communication, right? You can see the communication, negotiation skills, analytical skills, right? So these are the things that every company is searching for. So these are some of the small companies. Uh, I got some job profiles from some small companies and they also ask in the same thing. Good oral and written communication skills, able to work within the deadlines, same, same like IFS, resource oriented individual, and able to carry out research, that means analytical skills, uh, able to understand the importance of customer service, that means you are very good, the emotional intelligence, right? creative, innovative, and out of the 
thinking box ability right so you can identify that you i know that you have every you all of you are having the same uh requirement right strong knowledge and software quality methodologies testing concepts you know everything and uh, you know how uh, the uh, technical software quality assurance is uh, is evolving each and every phases elaboration estimation the scenario execution right you know everything now uh, with the theories that you covered and the critical and creative thinking skills right knowledge and experience and agile is scrum right fast learner team player right you can see that each and every companies are searching for same type of individual okay now what you can now what you are thinking what do you think yes i can do i know now you are think that yes i can do okay. there is nothing uh, magic everything is uh, you covered everything uh, uh, and you know most of the thing now you know the industry expectation so then uh, you can do so just uh, before wind up the session i would like to uh highlight one thing because even though that we are recruiting software quality assurance engineers we are thinking that whether you are suit for the company uh, as well so at which is we are having a pearl values that means passion innovation respect and leadership right so when we are recruiting the individuals rather than uh, checking uh, uh, apart from the quality assurance uh, thing we are we are checking the organization fit as well so whatever the company that you are going you have to check their core values and and think about yourself with the i am fit into their core values if you are fit into their core values then think how can i do my contribution uh, to improve their businesses right so then before you are going to the interview you have to think everything then while uh, uh, you are having the interview definitely uh, you will be able to tell the things what you are going to do for their companies and most of the time uh, it will added good advantage for you to uh, select for the company right, so uh, with that uh, let's hope uh, let's move with the hope i know yes you can do that so uh, you know that good fortune is what happens when opportunity meets with planning now you now you know how you can plan uh, to become a quality assurance engineer so with the planning you can uh, achieve your target so enjoy your journey and uh, be the change you wish to see in the world uh, thank you very much madam and thank you very much